Welcome to series of videos on history of electricity. This is based on the book of Isaac Asimov, How We Found Out About Electricity. I urge you to look up on that material and have a read. Um, I will try to add my perspective in these videos and in case um, some of the terminologies you don't understand, please don't worry about it. Just go with uh, perception of uh, the historic evolution of electricity. So the first scene um, is about rubbing and attraction. So it all started with the discovery of magnet about 500 BC. Uh, it is said that a uh, shepherd in a place called Magnesia, which is in the current day Turkey, um, observed that there were pieces of, um, you know, pieces of dust particles or particles attracted to its iron rod. Uh, probably they knew how to extract iron way back then. And soon news spread about it and people started talking about it. And those days Magnesia was a Greek colony and the news went to a great philosopher in Greece named Thales around 623 to 545 BC. He was a mathematician, astronomer, philosopher and and he was a very famous person way back then. And as the news spread to him, he started experimenting with this uh, observation. And he soon realized that, hey, you know, there were two kinds of he, attraction. One is obviously uh, the, the magnesian stone which was attracting metals. And as you can imagine, the magnesian, the, 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 gnome, the name magnet is derived from uh, the, you know, the magnesian stone as probably sometime it, the name changed to magnetic stone and people started just calling it magnet. So, so soon, pretty soon the news about this spread to a lot of people and people started to experiment with it and, and probably um, around around 20 BC to 20 AD there is a documented evidence of Han Dynasty using a lodestone compass. People used to take a pin or a piece of metal and rub it with the lodestone and they realized it had quite special property. In water it would always position towards uh, the, the north of the earth and south of the earth. And um, these compasses were called the wet compasses. Over time it was uh, there was a lot of innovation and and over the thousand years people started figuring out uh, the dry compass and dry compass was very very important invention because it led to a lot of exploration in sea and it is it is uh, it is known that Christopher Columbus used compass uh, during some of his navigation in 1554 um, to 1603, there was a famous English physician, physicist, and natural philosopher. Those days, scientists were called natural philosophers, um, which I think is uh, natural philosophy. Uh, I don't know why it's called science today. Um, so he asked a few questions. Um, you know, why should amber attract objects after being rubbed? What was so special about amber? Can I try it with other stones and would other stones attract? So he tried all this and then he realized that, hey, you know, all these stones, the different kinds of stone were exhibiting the same property as amber. And he knew that amber was called electron in Greek and, and electrum in Latin. So he therefore called all objects uh, that showed this ability to attract after being rubbed as electrics um, in, you know, in resemblance, uh, it means in resemblance to amber. So around 1619 to 1707, um, uh, Walter Charlton, he thought, what do we call this attraction? Okay, you call that object as electrics, but process of attraction should be called something. What do we call that? What do we call the strange power that makes a small scrap of paper cling to the piece of rubber amber um, of 
or, or, or sorry, of amber rubbed in with, with, with you know with a wool or something, right? Uh, rubbed amber. About 1650, you know, he coined this term called electricity. So this whole process of attraction was called electricity. Around 1601 to 1674, uh, a famous German scientist, inventor, and politician called Otto von Guericke, he started experimenting, and uh, uh, and he asked the following question: uh, Amber attracted light objects when it was rubbed. That's okay, but what if I rubbed it harder? Would attraction grow stronger? Would amber contain more and more electricity? Uh, now, what's interesting is it took about 1,600 years for somebody to ask all these questions and and we are just about 500 years from when these questions were asked uh, you know today less than 500 years so it's fascinating right a thousand five hundred years people didn't ask the right questions and we are 500 years from from then um, so there are a lot of questions to be asked I encourage you to ask a lot of questions <clears throat> then the, you know, the problem that Gurke had was, you know, amber was very expensive and gems were very expensive. So he wanted to figure out, well, can I make this electrics uh, or, 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 uh, or the process of electricity? Can I produce it uh, by any other mechanism using other material? And he figured out that, uh, you know, he took a ball of sulfur and he started rotating it and he kept his hand on the ball. And as he started rubbing it over time, due to friction, um, there was there was we know today that the, the charges get developed in the sulfur ball, and it starts attracting the paper. So he realized that uh, oh, there is some link between friction and um, and 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 this process of electrics and the attraction, which you call as electricity. So this ends the first part of this video. Uh, in the next part, we will see how conductors and non-conductors were discovered.